Hey, this is a video for the Hi-Fi Man Susvara. This is, it's not gonna be the full review video, but this is an unboxing because it costs $6,000. In Japan, it costs about $6,600 US, actually. So it's closer to a $7,000 headphone. And you might be saying to yourself, that's nuts, I'd never do that. Eh, never say never. I did, I don't feel bad about it at all. I've listened to it a little bit, not at its full glory, but I'm not, there's no bummed out part about it. I don't feel, there's no feeling about it good or bad. I actually feel kind of good about it, to be honest with you. Um, before we continue, the packaging itself is a little bit... I got the ZMF before, and it came with this, you know, big-ass case, something like this, the gold planer comes in. I would much prefer something like this than I would this, because this is... Once it's inside here, if this tips and falls down, there's no plate to scratch on it. For practical purposes, I would think that something like this would probably be something more appropriate for something that costs $6,000. So remember, this isn't a sound evaluation right now, not yet. That'll be coming using specific music like I usually do. But just looking at the box, it's the same thing that comes with the $3,000 HE1000 V2 in every single way, pretty much. The plate is not the same, obviously, but it's. I think the box, this hinge right here, is certainly the same thing. So you open up this hinge, you paid six thousand dollars and you get your card you can freeze that if you want and contact hi-fi man and say did he really buy that yes he did he bought it amazon jp full price you've got a cover and then you've got this foam and then you've got a book that tells you about the family tree a decade of planar renaissance uh don't care but I I guess I'm, I'm summit five is kind of new for me um, utopia didn't have a book take this off and you come to the most egregious the boxes you know okay not okay I'd actually rather there must be people on head fire other places that have taken this and put this into a proper box because this, taking this in and out, if you eventually are going to sell it in five years and move along, all the scratches of having been playing with it like that are going to ding the value because when you take a picture of it. So there got to be people out there that thought, either one, because I love it, I want it to be more protected, or two, I want to keep its resale value high, so I want to put it in something better, put this back in its box. This actually didn't come in a box, like sleeve box that said Sun Sasvara. It just came in a cardboard box so when you open the cardboard box you get this wrapped in bubble wrap so there is no outer box actually I didn't get one um, this cable this cable is so poor that I went on to Yahoo auctions and bought my own for I don't know 100, 100 bucks I also did the same for this hi-fi man and this cost a couple hundred bucks but that's I actually know who that DIYer is now um, this is the same cable identical cable that comes with models that are about three to four thousand dollars cheaper same exact cable like they've got a bundle box and they just grab it and put it in this case and when you open it look at it and you see it and you see stuff like this and that kinking and it just this was a big mistake right here this cable is no I don't is does anybody take pictures I saw a review of this set and I didn't see this cable in the review at all there was no mention of it and there's a there's a reason it sticks out as a sore thumb as being not worthy of the financial investment or um, they could have done better I think they've got stuff that's even more expensive it's got different cables uh, this was just this that disappointed me the case I'll deal with it the cape the cables are garbage the earphones itself are, that's gold on the inside. These are the most balanced. Now we're getting into the positive because I'm actually holding the headphones in it. These are the most balanced in hand and in feel that I've ever held in my life. This is metal when usually it's plastic for hi-fi. When I saw pictures of this while I was waiting for this to come in, I thought, oh my God, is that plastic? Because I'm going to snap. No, it's metal. All the way around it actually now I totally messed it up for my own head but whatever oh, I had it up because it's in the box 
It looks like when you're looking at it, the way it sits, like a, a 10 year old headphone that's been used for 10 years and is broken in completely. Just the way that the pads already seem a little crushed in, the, just the stance of the set itself. It looks like that. When you put it on your head, it feels like that. It's got a very comfortable, good to go feel to it. And its profile, it's, it really does look like something that's been used for a long time. I, I don't know if you can understand what I'm saying. Sometimes you put stuff on your head, the full cow utopia, the headband system, it really feels not comfortable for something that's that price range. This, on the other hand, feels like a professional set of headphones with no extra anything. This is the driver. This is the housing for the driver. You just saw that and you didn't hear anything. I didn't either. This is all metal. This is a simple band. It's a very simple structure, which is what I would want. It's simplicity. It's beauty. They nailed it on the aesthetics. They borked it on the cable stuff, but at the end of the day, I put new cables on everything anyway, so I really don't care. In the hand, it's absolutely gorgeous. And I don't know if you can understand about the broken in thing. Motorcycle seats. Um, stuff that you look at and you think that's been used and it, it that makes it look even like that's loved. This headphone comes out of the box looking like it's been loved for years in mint condition. Love it. I have given a little bit of time to it in the listening with the drop 789 and because of that I can't give audio impressions though I'm not bummed at all there's a thing in car audio and a lot of times people suffer from underpowered distortion because they buy subwoofers and then they they spend a lot of money on the drivers and they have a amp that's not quite up to spec but they think I'll I'll deal with that later and then they judge the JLs or the Rockfords or the digital designs and they say these really aren't what I thought they were going to be well wait a second get the amp that it's supposed to push it that needs to extend there is a throw that you need long throw or you need to extend those surrounds like the manufacturer intended and judging subwoofers on an amp that's not up to the job is making a mistake you should have gotten the amp first or follow the way that they recommend it. Hi Fan Man is recommending a certain amount of output. The community is recommending the same. The 789 by drop by spec should be just about enough and it is just about enough but just about enough isn't good enough. Do you know what I mean? If you're gonna evaluate something like this. I don't even want to sit down and start to try to enjoy this until I've got headroom. The Jot 2 is coming in and also a flux amp. That right there, that sinker, that actually pushed this. But I'd already gotten in my head that I need to step up, so the Jot 2 has definitely got enough power. How is that going to treat this? I don't know, but I'll go ahead and give it a try. And then after that, the flux, I think, should be enough. And then I'm going to go into speaker taps. So I'm my overall impression to this point with this was it was money well spent. I wish that they'd put it in a box that was more worthy of it because someday, maybe I won't, but someday I might sell this, and I'd like to not think about every time I put this box down that you know if there's something under this it's going to scratch the outside of this whatever this is instead of just put it in a box which I might actually do and then stick this away somewhere where nothing can touch it for the day where I may eventually move on which may never actually come don't need the cash that's real gold in there so that's the Susvara that's an amp that's not good enough Underpower distortion is a real thing. Make sure before you move along from things that are expensive or or not and are said to require a lot of power, make sure you're giving that with headroom. Don't turn up your volume pot all the way up and then think, there we go. Like if you've got no headroom and you're just getting to where you feel okay, you don't have enough power. So I'm not going to fail like that because I saw too many people do it with car audio. I'm not going to repeat the same sin when I complained about that because I saw people not really getting the full of it. So when people say, oh, you need, you don't need a $5,000 amp for this really, I'm pretty sure. Though it's a little more expensive than I would have wanted to pay. 
So I'm not mad at all. When I bought the 64 Audio EX, uh, EX, the U18T, and I had the U12T right next to it, I felt upset because $1,000 for six extra drivers, and then to actually come to the conclusion that I thought the U12T was better. That was, that was an angry moment. There's been no moment like that with this. Just on the, like, this ZMF does this. This would have been better. And why cables that, why not a cable like this? Or just a regular, because it's different from what you put with your other stuff that is thousands of dollars less and somebody feels like I'm on another level. And when you pull those cables out, every single person that's a hi-fi man, fan, knows like, ah, oh, shit that cable like you can take that out of the experience there should be no i gotta get overs with a six thousand six dollar headphone so i'm ready to go i got the jot coming probably in a week and i also got a flux coming and i've also got uh amp that i bought specifically to do tapping um which should have enough output to it so that's the part one of the susvar part two will be um, ocd music diving using the music that i use uh, all the time over there we're in shutdown mode but the same music that I'm always using is the music that I'm going to use to evaluate that what is a what is the quality of the bass pulls and releases on several tracks I'll get into it more because there's so much money in this and some people might really really think I if that's I'll speak to you there's people that are on my channel that are musicians there's a great number of them that are musicians and they tell me that while other channels say they don't want to talk about music because the genre might make other people feel like excluded, people that are in the industry and are musicians and make music, create music, write music, and produce music, they're intelligent enough to extrapolate uh, bass guitar and the, the EADG and the pulls and the releases to several actual instruments that exist in the same range, that don't have the same timbre but are produced in the same thing and can be impacting the same thing like vocals or so my library though it's going to be rock and roll and reggae and hip-hop you know grunge rock it's still going to speak to a wider audience than you would imagine because musicians so this is the sus bar it's quite expensive i don't feel any way about it either way and that's a good sign so part one and i'm out